Back at the hangar again today, we're going to have a look at this uh, radiator air intake control. But first, let's address that issue about the prop stopping. If you watched to near to the end of my last video, you will see that the prop stopped just before touchdown. If your engine's going to quit, that's the best place for it to quit. If you got no thrust, then you can get stopped quick. What I'd like to add to that is chances of your propeller stopping when you're in the air are pretty slim. The forward motion helps to keep the prop spin. However, that doesn't mean we shouldn't address it. So let's have a take a look at that uh, see where we can go. Hopefully you can see it. That shiny screw top there. That is the uh, that is the uh, idle adjustment screw. Now the day that uh, that day after the last flight, I did see if I could adjust this, but try as I might, I cannot turn that screw. It is locked. So so the setting it's not a, it's not an issue of setting. So it's a couple of possibilities. One. It's a fuel injected engine, so it's possible that the um, mixture is a, the mixture is a manual lookup table. So it's possible that the uh, mixture setting was just a little bit lean. I have a manual override, so it could have been just a little bit lean for that uh, RPM setting. That's probably the most likely. But uh, as I said before, the the actual butterfly stop point shouldn't move. Anyway, I'm going to have to get a heat gun out and uh, I'm going to have to heat this junction up here. There's a, there's a jam nut in there. It's a stainless steel jam nut. It's fairly thick. I've got some thinner 1032 nuts I can put in there that allow this to go down just a little bit and raise the RPM up 100 RPM or something like that. I think it's set around 1750. I'll bring it up to 1850, maybe 900 or 1900 and that, uh, that should make a difference. And of course... The other thing I wanted to talk about is this air control itself. Now it works. I can live with it. I'm strong enough to run it, but not quite right. And I think I can do better. Um, thinking about it afterwards, one of, the, one of my main thoughts I've come up with is the problem with this is because it's normally down and it lifts up, uh, the fail-safe operation of this isn't... isn't uh, isn't the best because um, the hinge points at the back and it lifts up if the linkage itself ever let go for whatever reason this would snap up and it would block off a large portion of my rad which in the winter time on a day like today when it's like minus seven or eight celsius it's not a big deal um, but if that happened if i leave and i intend to leave this in here that happened to me in the middle of the summertime when i blocked off the back half of my rad that would that would be that would be a big deal and I'd be looking for a place to land uh, pretty quick. I need to put it in like this and it'll lift it up this way. And it'll do two things. One, it will enable me to block off more of the radiator when I want to, have more control. And the second thing it'll do is if it fails, the air pressure will simply blow it down. And in the winter time, the worst thing that will happen is my engine will run colder than I want, but that's not a big deal. I, the engine will work just fine if it's even if it's only a 140 degrees, it will run. So anyway, yeah, so I'm going to try to put it in here so it will do this. Now, the in my initial thought is, well, I have to push it up and pull it down. Problem is, it's not going to, it's not going to, I'm not going to have the two control levers in the same direction at the same time, which is what I want. There's a little bit of area here, and I can feel there's a bit of a gap. It's not 100% it's not tight between the inner shroud 
the inner plenum of, plex of fiberglass and the outer shell of the, of the cowling. So this is where the vernier is going to connect. So I got it set up so it should work the way it worked before. So if I push it, it's down, I pull, up it comes. So my old airplane adage of balls to the wall is going to still be good. So I'll have both, both levers in the same place. So at full throttle, push this forward, maximum airflow, and you back off the throttle and you want to reduce the airflow pull this back. So I'll have my two controls in a relative position to each other which I like. So another thing I thought I'd mention is that this little, this little fork end on here. I needed another one and I thought I had another one so I could use it down below on my uh, air control but I didn't have one. I looked this thing up on Aircraft Spruce. Seems to me that it was about 60 bucks. And I couldn't believe it. So I, uh, I took a half inch bolt and put it in a lathe, center drilled it, tapped it for 1032, and machined it out with a hacksaw and a file, basically, and then drilled this. Uh, 3 sixteenths hole through the side for the for the actuator. Anyway, that's a that's the fork end that goes on my vernier. Just the kind of things that thrifty home builders do. Okay, so we're looking at my new mechanism here for uh, controlling the amount of air that's going to flow into my radiator. So it's now in the throttle, or the uh, control is fully to the for is fully forward, which has got this thing all the way down because the lever here is at the bottom. So let's push forward, pivots down. Now I don't know if you can see it, but I purposely put a bend in here, and one of the reasons for that is there's already a bend in this air intake. It's flat and smooth and then it bends up. And there's two reasons for that. One is to pinch the uh, the area at the back here to the radiator because all the air that's going in here wants to go to the back. So you need to pinch it off so that it doesn't all go there. And the whole idea is to force the air to come up and curve and hope that you'll get some of it forcing it through this, um, through the front half of the rad. So I've actually got this bend in here, and the ironic thing about this, I'm using this to block off the air and increase my temperature, but I actually may find that a very slight increase of this, it'll actually force the air up, some of the air up to the front of my rad sooner than it is now. I might actually get a slight improvement in cooling uh, with this, this very, very subtle deflection. So, I've got the cowling on, but as you notice, down here, i got this thing protruding out almost an inch and a half. So, if you look at the cowling, you'll see that there's a channel here already. What I'm going to have to do is bring that forward to here, smooth that in right to the front. I can't do that now because it's winter time, it's freezing here more than freezing, below freezing, and uh, I'll put, I'll make some kind of a metal, uh, in the short term I'll put a metal blister on there, something similar to what I did here, this is a piece of metal that allows room for my exhaust, so I'll do, uh, I'll make, I'll make a piece of trim metal, put over top of that and bring it back in here, and then in the spring I'll uh, take that off and and glass it in with fiberglass. Anyhow, it is working. So there it is, uh, all the way forward and down. Uh, 
and that's with it all the way. This is with it all the way up. So it's definitely going to block a lot of air. It's certainly worth uh, worth giving it a test flight and see how it actually how it actually performs in in the real world. Sunny day. This is typical here in the Ottawa area. And it's a beautiful sunny day in the in the winter time. It's usually damn cold, and it is. But well, it's a pretty cold day. I don't know if this will read, but it's minus 15 degrees Celsius. I'm dressed for it. Got my uh, little camera on my head. Got a tuk on underneath my ball cap, and I wearing the ball cap so that I can so that I can put the camera on the peak here. So far what I've noticed is that the, uh, the control has, has stiffness as it did before, but it's not as stiff. And as soon as I, as soon as I engage or release the uh, control, it does what I want. Yes, yeah, so Rev 2 of this uh, air control is working better than Rev 1, but it's clearly not good enough. As I bring the airplane in for the day, uh, I've got some thoughts of what I can do. And, uh, stay tuned and we'll see what my feeble brain can come up with in the next video.